But one of the first animals you see when you enter the Gladys Porter Zoo, the American flamingos are hard to miss with their bright pink feathers. But how do they get that way and could their color change? Charlie Rigo gives us a closer look in this week's Zoo Guest of the Week. We've made our way down to the beginning of the Gladys Porter Zoo, which is where you'll find the flamingos. And uh, Charlie, what I love is that this is a pretty close encounter. Again, we like to get the exhibits that the public can get up close and personal. Yeah, and these are, um, and like you said, it, it's the first thing that you, that you see when you come here besides yeah. the gorillas. And these are American flamingos, and we do have two different types of flamingos. We have these American, we have Chilean, which are on the other side, which they have a really nice exhibit too. And um, yeah, this is one thing we're trying to develop is getting these these uh, beautiful birds to go ahead and feed off of you. And as you can see, some of them already do it. And, yeah. and um, but there, um, like I found out, there's some of the younger ones and some of the, they're trying to teach the older, the older flamingos some new tricks <laughs> and the feed over here. And one of the interesting things that some of these flamingos have been here since the zoo opened, they can get over 50 years old. Wow. And um, well, about 50, 40 to 50 years old. And um, so, yeah, they really live a long time. And, and I actually never knew that until I started kind of interacting sometime with, with the um, flamingos here. Yeah, speaking of interacting, you are feeding them something right now. Let's talk a little bit about their diet because as everyone notices, flamingos have these bright pink and orange colors. Yeah, and this is uh, this is just a different palette specially designed for them, but they actually have another little area. It's like a little small pool, and, and people kind of sometimes think it's like dirty water, but it's not. <laughs> it's, it's like, a, it is a murky little water, but it, that's because it has a specific um, food and dye just for them, and um, that gives them, it's like a pinkish dye, obviously, and it gives them their, their feathers, and their feathers actually absorb um, that color, but it's not different. You can't give them like a blue dye, and they're not going to turn blue. Or anything. Yeah, it's just specific to that color because in the wild they would eat um, in areas that are high concentrated with algae or crustaceans that would actually give them their, nat their natural color. And what I think is very cool about the flamingos and what most people probably notice is that they always stick together. Yes and they're, they're, they're flock uh, birds. They, they feel safety in numbers and what I've learned also is that when it comes breeding time that um, the closer proximity they are the safer they feel and then suddenly they'll start nesting and every so often well every season we'll have uh, maybe a couple babies you know from our from our American flamingos the Chilean flamingos are still have uh, we built them a new exhibit so they're still getting used to um, uh, building nests in that new exhibit so it'll take maybe hopefully next year we'll have a great little turnout for them all right well thanks so much Charlie well thank you and mark your calendars for wild tales at the Gladys Porter Zoo next Saturday November 12th there will be free children's books handed out the event is from 10 to 3 p.m. for more information visit gpz.org